Hi guys, Sarah here from Highland Haven Australian Shepherds, and this is episode seven of my dog breeding video series. Today we're gonna to talk about record keeping, so unfortunately it's not gonna be a terribly interesting video, but record keeping is super important if you are looking to breed your dogs, so it's a topic that I really feel strongly that I have to cover. So let's get into it. So record keeping is important, of course, because you wanna be able to schedule uh, you know, your job or your life around when your dogs need to be bred or are going to have puppies or when your puppies are going to be uh, needing your attention for eight weeks. But also dog breeding can cause a lot of anxiety. Uh, I would assume that you feel the same way about your uh, female that I do and you don't want anything to happen to her. Uh, so recording what happens in a journal-like form uh, during um, heat, during pregnancy, and during whelping, and during uh, the eight weeks that you have your puppies before they go to their forever homes, um, helps you look back on previous litters and reassure yourself that what you have just seen or what is going on is an, within a relative normal behavior for your dog. Uh, an example of this might be uh, last year, I, uh, if you've been following along, you know I had two litters 10 days apart. Each litter had a runt. Um, I'd never had a runt in any previous litter before, um, and here I had two in two separate litters. And so I carefully documented um, my concern uh, with the runt, what I did to um, uh, help the runt along. I gave them a uh, separate time on the milk bar uh, so that they weren't being pushed off by the other puppies. And um, I recorded their progress. And I did read the notes today, and it said uh, that by week one, by day seven, both runs had caught up to the other puppies in their litters, in their respective litters, and were fine for the rest of uh, the seven weeks until they went uh, home with their new families. Um, so that is something that uh, I will really appreciate this time if I have another run in the litter to not worry so much about that puppy. Do exactly what I did last time and be confident that that runt is gonna come around and catch up with the other puppies. So I will try to keep it short today. Today is going to be part one of at least two parts of record keeping. Uh, the other parts I'm gonna do later on um, in a few weeks, but we're gonna to start today with uh, recording your dog's heat cycle and recording your dog's pregnancy. So let's get started. Okay, so there's a couple of um, ways that I keep records. Uh, this is my breeding book. So um, if, you, if I open it up, you can see that I have all these tabs these are all of Remy and Meadows litters for the pet from the past few years. So this goes all the way back to Remy litter one um, and all of the information there. So I've moved Remy uh, Meadow litter two up to the front because that's what we're working on now. And then of course we have my key uh, whelping um, notes from last litter. So there's a couple of ways that I keep notes. Um, the first step is to just use a regular uh, spiral notebook. Um, and then I just, uh, in a very low-tech way, start to write down uh, my thoughts and what's been going on. And I have them divided up. So very simple, low-tech, sort of journaling exactly what's going on each day. And then what I do is I transfer these notes, um, the ones that apply, and I put them onto a Google Calendar. So today we're just going to narrow this down, this record keeping down, because I don't want to be too boring or too long-winded. Um, I do want to stress how important record keeping is, but I know this is going to be a little, boring, a little bit boring for you guys, but for anybody who's interested in breeding for the first time, uh, record keeping is super important, so hang in there with me. Um, so what I do is I transfer the information that I've written by hand onto a Google Calendar. Uh, and today we're just going to focus on record keeping for heat cycle and record keeping for um, your dog's pregnancy. So let's take a look at those videos. Okay guys, so uh, I did a fancy screen recording, but you really I wasn't really able to see anything. So I'm gonna do this next part to show you my calendar, uh, very low tech. I'm just gonna hand hold my camera and try to keep it steady for you guys so you can actually see the information on here that I wanna show you. So as I said, I use the Google Calendar in order to uh, record um, information on Meadow's heat cycle and on her pregnancy. So if you look here to the left, you can see that I have several calendars and I have HH Aussies checked and the rest of them unchecked. Uh, the other stuff is all my personal information. So I just checked HH Aussies. So the only thing that's coming up on this calendar is all related to breeding. So if you look up here, you'll see 
that I have uh, meadow, heat, dew, and cane 23 weeks. And you see down at the bottom here, there's some notes. Uh, so dew and, and cane means that I had calculated that it was gonna come at 23 weeks, and it actually came on the nose, which is pretty unusual. Usually uh, meadow is uh, fluctuates plus or minus 20, uh, two or three weeks on either end of her when I calculate she's due. And also remember that she went uh, back and forth from a four month to a six month schedule. So uh, to get this absolutely correct was <laughs> kind of a fluke. Uh, but nevertheless, I did. So you'll see these notes down here. Um, they say this was the number of weeks between the birth of the puppies and her last heat cycle. Prior to that, her gap was 17 weeks and before that it was 26 weeks. So what I do is I keep real careful count in between her heat cycles uh, to try to predict when she is going to uh, go into heat next. All right, so let's click out of this one. Um, let's go over here, so day eight. No information, it just says day eight. It's just alerting me that day eight is like the earliest that she could be ready to breed and I might have to start separate them, separating them. So here we have day 11. Again, no notes. It's just reminding me that day 11 is probably when I'm gonna to need to start separating them and taking the, the boys to work, which is exactly what happened. Same with day 12, no information here. It's just uh, recording the days. So let's go to day 13. All right, so if you recall, I did breed meadow on day 13, a day sooner than I had uh, planned. So you see along the top here, it says uh, bread day one and it has 16 minute tie. So that's important to record the length of the tie of the breeding and what day of breeding it is. All right, let's look here. We have, this is meadow day 14 and this was the second day of breeding with an 18 minute tie. Okay, now uh, if you've been following along, you know I skipped Friday and the next day I bred her was Saturday. So this is meadow day 16 and um, we had a 25 minute tie. Okay, so this calculates the breeding portion of her heat cycle. Okay, so that's the um, standing heat. So now we're on down here on meadow day 18 um, of her heat cycle. So this is, she's no longer interested in breeding. Let's look at the notes underneath. Uh, it says the tie is off of meadow and he is, if you look down here, it says focused on humping and licking Deacon. So that's called redirection. Uh, his tie at this point was still just full of hormones and uh, Deacon seemed like an easy target for him. So he was just completely redirecting all of his um, uh, hormones and uh, drive on Deacon. So we had to keep a real close eye on that. Uh, let's look at uh, day 18. I have a note here that says still bothering Deacon. This will tell me next time that um, they, the boys cannot be together uh, without supervision yet. And then uh, we have here, better with Deacon. All right, so it's getting better, that's good. And then we have over here, back to normal. So this is Meadows day 21 of her cycle. Um, and we have a notation that says they were back to normal. So when uh, Meadow goes into heat uh, next time, I'll know that by around day 21, everybody should be back to normal. Okay, so that is the heat part of the um, calendar. Let's now talk about uh, pregnancy. So we see a different color here. This is uh, Meadow week one uh, and her start weight of 45 pounds. So if you recall, we take the first day of breeding, which was here on the 12th. Uh, that would be day one of um, her pregnancy. And then of course, a week later we have one, she's completed one week of pregnancy and we have her start weight, so that's important. Okay, so let's look at week two and see if there's any notations, and there are. So if you can see down here, it says, uh, was higher strung than, la than usual last pregnancy. So that's telling me last time, uh, last pregnancy at week two, Meadow started to show some uh, anxiety. And it's interesting because I just mentioned to Gary yesterday that Meadow was driving me crazy. And she was super clingy and super anxious and whiny. So that's, um, although I feel bad for Meadow, that's probably a good sign uh, showing that she's pregnant. Uh, so we did just did week two. So let's go to the next month. Let's look at week three. So notations for week three. Had some stomach upset last pregnancy. So remember we talked about that being one of the signs that perhaps she is pregnant. 
So uh, we're going to look around week three and see if she also has some uh, stomach upset. Open week four. The notation on week four from last pregnancy says went off her food last pregnancy, uh, started feeding a little more, gained two pounds. So if you recall, I said we could see perhaps some weight gain around week four, and that's exactly when it happened in the last letter. So let's look at week five. The notation on week five says gained three pounds at this point, began to look very pregnant. So I'm going to look for that on week five. And she should have start to have a rounder shape at that point. Week six, last pregnancy, it said she had gained 4.5 pounds. And that's a significant amount of weight when you consider it's 10% of her overall body weight. So that's a good, healthy uh, weight gain and probably indicates that she is pregnant. Uh, week seven, the notations say at this point she had gained seven pounds, but she was still eating and acting normally, so did not increase meals yet. So uh, for those of you who have been pregnant, you know that um, the, preg the more pregnant you get, the more um, room your fetus takes in your abdomen and starts to squish your uh, stomach and you can't eat as much. Uh, so at that point you would eat smaller meals uh, several times a day and that's exactly what we would do for Meadow as soon as I see an indication that she can't eat a full meal. But according to this, on week seven she was still eating normally so no reason to make any changes. If you look over here, um, for this pregnancy I have a reminder to um, make an appointment for her x-ray on week seven. So that would actually be day 52. And let's go to April. April, um, we have here on Meadows week eight, a notation that says begin temperature check. So when done correctly, recording your dog's temperature starting about a week prior to their due date, um, will show fluctuations in temperatures and then a huge dip in temperature and that will indicate that she is going to have her puppies within a 24-hour period after that after her temperature bottoms out so if you keep it accurately and carefully that will give you um, a 24-hour heads up you should not be surprised when your puppies start being born if you're taking a proper temperature check and we'll touch on that in another episode uh, if we look over here it says day 59 this is when her temperature dropped last time indicating that she was going to have her puppies within 24 hours. And if you see underneath it, it says temperature drop, uh, um, temperature drop on that day, and the first pup was born 13 hours later. So I was able to uh, schedule my day and call out of work. Uh, now we just have um, day 60 here. If you know, it says this is the day she had her puppies last time. That's very interesting for me this time, and I'm going to be, um, you know, very prepared for her to be having puppies at day 60 rather than day 63, which would be uh, a technical for t full term for uh, a dog pregnancy. This just says day 61, day 62, and then her technical due date of day 63 would be um, a full term uh, pregnancy for a dog. Okay guys, so that's it for today's episode. I'm sorry it was uh, a bit boring and a bit long, but like I say, it's super important if you're looking to breed your dogs to keep careful records. Uh, if you're liking this series, please like, comment, follow, and share, all that good stuff. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.